Caleb Hammer has some pretty big allegations going against him right now. I'm not going to waste any of your time. We're going to go ahead and start with one of the biggest ones where he is talking to one of the people who was on his show about some pretty disturbing things. Let's get into it. I can tell you're a cool dude and I want to like, if there's anything, any connections that I have, which I've built a lot of connections in Austin, anything that I'm able to kind of link you to, you know, I definitely want to be helpful. The main reason I haven't wanted to have this conversation via text is sorry I had to burp um one I'm not used to only fans <laughs> straight up uh it's not really my scene uh you know I'm a personal finance dude I don't really know anything about that uh two I'm straight I'm like 90 percent straight I've definitely fooled around because I'm open-minded um and you know when you get drunk whatever but you know so and this is like a you know a man-on-man -man thing uh but essentially, I think, well, from the conversation I had with him, the pay will be dependent on what you're willing to do, and what you're willing to do is set by you. So what he would like to do, you guys make out. He would like to do that. What he, you guys, what he would like you guys to do, him fill you up. He would like to do that. You can say no about any of these. He would like to play with your dick. And see, that that's why I didn't want to type this out either, because that's like weird for me to say I don't you know it's not like we're friends or anything but that's what he wants to do he wants to uh, give you a blowjob uh, and, oh I was also told and confirmed with him that your face would be hidden uh, blurred out and hidden your identity would be hidden um, um, and then if you wanted to give a blowjob you could again you would make more from that and uh, you know he would eat your butt <laughs> And you would make more for that. You can say no as well. Uh, uh, you know, you could top him. He could top you. Whatever you're willing to do comes with more money. But you could literally do nothing. You could literally just lay back and let him just touch you for the video. And I guess for some reason his subscribers love that. And you'd get paid for it. So really that's what it is. And, you know, I, there's things that I think I don't feel comfortable talking about in this kind of situation. And I'd be happier to talk over in person. Um, maybe I'm just that kind of person. Uh, so you just let me know what you think. Now, I know that's pretty crazy to open up with that. And I let you listen to the whole thing because I wanted it to hit you like it hit me. Very, very crazy things to be hearing from an individual. Now, how did all this get started? Now, Caleb has said that in the past he used this thing called casting calls. OK, so the first 40 episodes he was bringing in people to pay them. So these things would look better on the financial audit. Now, Scott goes into a deeper detail about this, and I want you guys to check it out. And then we're going to dive deeper into what is so wrong with this man. Many people don't know is that many of the early guests on Caleb Hammer's show were actually paid actors hired off of a website known as Backstage to appear on the show. Zeke was one of the actors that claims to have found out about Caleb's show from the site, and from the listing Zeke showed me, the offer was quite generous with an initial small $25 appearance fee, and then a 25% commission on all revenue generated from the episode for 12 months. Anticipated commission was believed to range from $2,500 to $8,000, depending on video performance. Zeke, only 19 at the time, jumped at the chance to make to him what seemed like a large sum of money. Many people have seen Zeke's episode, have called him an insufferable brat, and way worse things, but don't seem to understand that the attitude portrayed by Zeke isn't true to his normal personality from what I've seen talking to him, and it was designed to get as many views as possible to increase his chance of making more money and getting more screen time. This tactic ended up working, and Zeke appeared two more times on The Caleb Hammer Show, racking up a total of over 1 million views across the three episodes he appeared. Those view totals should have netted him a large sum of money if the commission payments seen in the job offer were paid. However, Zeke's claimed to have only received a couple hundred dollars in total for his time on the show. So as he goes on, he goes on to say that Caleb no longer does this. He doesn't offer the commission. However, it has been seen that he still uses the casting call, as we saw with the episode with a woman named Amber. It was also included in Think Before You Sleep. Okay, so... Now, is this all pretty crazy of what's going on right now? Is this all enough for us to be like, ah, Caleb is really a problem? Not necessarily. Now, him asking a person to do all those things with him is pretty rough. However, it gets worse. Way worse. But I want to go ahead and give my quick opinion on just these first two things. Number one, the casting call. He was open to this. Caleb had told his people that he did this, so it wasn't a secret. However, 
Caleb has said that he quit doing this to people, and that's not true. It is shown that he is still using the casting calls. My issue with all of this is that this is why you got to be very careful when you watch YouTubers and watch people who blow up suddenly. Not saying everybody who blows up on YouTube is doing something behind the scenes, but you got to make sure that you're looking past it. And if you want to see his show as just an acting show, fine. But even as you look at the thumbnails, even as you look at how he talks to people, it seems like this has gone from financial audit to embarrassing the individuals on the thing. I would also encourage you to go watch all three interviews, which you can find in the description of Scott's video, which I will put down in the description. Please go through and watch these videos and interviews because Caleb says that when he does a thumbnail, that everybody's okay with it. He explains this to them. However, we see in an interview that he has with this young lady named Gia, that's not the truth. He may take pictures with the individuals, but he doesn't always go through through the thumbnails with them to let them know what it's going to be like. Because I find it hard to believe that somebody's going to allow themselves to be called a dumb idiot or be called stupid or be called the worst person on the planet. It seems like Caleb got caught up in the whole... Not necessarily clickbait, but he got caught up in the whole will embarrass people to make money. So let's get into more of the allegations that really seems to have gotten Caleb in trouble. The first one that made several people uncomfortable was Caleb's comments about finding a 16 year old boy hot. Now in this chat group, everyone has nicknames instead of their actual name being used. I was told that Caleb picked many of these nicknames, but a few were picked by other members. Caleb was allegedly known as Super Ho Diddly Ho. So the user known as has sex all the time says, what's this hit beat you got playing? Super Ho responds with smoking is gross. Uncut responds with so is saying that 15 year old boys are hot. Dancing says, oh damn. Super Ho responds with 16. Uncut says, doesn't make your case any better. Super Ho responds with, haha, thinking from a picture is cute isn't bad. I don't think the person was cut because they are young. He had facial hair, like, come on. Uncut says why screenshot because Super Ho had taken a picture of this guy's Snapchat of his 16 year old friend and Super Ho says he hot is gay please. Uncut says he's 16 and no effing perv. Super Ho responds with shame. Uncut says what was the age of consent in Michigan? Super Ho says 16. Uncut says Texas is 17 and Super Ho says shame. Now Scott does bring this to Caleb and Caleb goes to say that this was completely out of context. Now, if you watch the interview or watch this video, I watched the entire interview that he had with Caleb's ex-friend. His friend said that the reason the whole conversation started, which we just saw, was because the guy y'all saw named Uncut was congratulating that 16 year old boy. And when he put it on his Snapchat congratulating him, Caleb went and took a snapshot or a, a screenshot of that now, when you take a screenshot on a snap, it lets the person know that there was a screenshot taken of it. So Uncut knew that that happened. So that's when he confronted Caleb and said, why did you take a screenshot? And that's when Caleb said what he just said. Is he gay? Please. And that's when the whole conversation started. So Caleb said that was taken out of context. But the whole reason the conversation started is because he took that screenshot. So there's no context missing. Now, it does get worse from here. Caleb continues to be out of line. He continues to say things that are problematic, and we're going to go ahead and get into those right now. Now, that wasn't the only time Super Ho made comments about teenage boys. In another post, it made it clear that Super Ho has no qualms about his desire for those young teenage boys. So in these chat messages, Super Ho posts a picture of another member's Instagram page that shows a young boy, and he asks who the guy's name is, and the other guy gives him his name, which I blocked out, and then Uncut says, Caleb's boy crush. And Super Ho responds with, I would like to personally stick my penis in a hole of his. Any hole will do. Thank you. Uncut responds with gross. And Super Ho responds with hot. Let me. Uncut responds with dude, he's like 14. Super Ho responds with nah, probably around the other MCI member's age. If they were, if they were there with him. Later, Super Ho says, and if fuck, 17, it's legal there. It is here. Uncut responds with Caleb, you're 23. That's gross. Super Ho says, not really. What I'm 50 and I find a sexy 21 year old. I could be a sugar daddy. I will do it or her sugar daddy. Has sex all the time responds with a uh, confused or upset meme. And then Super Ho says, both my grandparents sets are 10 years apart. Six years is nothing. I would shove that cock right down his throat where it belongs. Uncut responds with, it's something if they're underage. Super Ho says, anything under 16 is. Believe it or not, 17 is not under 16. 
has sex all the time, responds with another meme. Uncut then says, still not an adult. Superho says, I fucked too many people when I was not an adult. Uncut says, just trying to save you from trouble. Superho says, if something is not against the law, there would be no trouble. Uncut responds with, I mean, you do you and do those boys. And Superho responds with, I do. Now, these are very disturbing things that we're hearing from Caleb. Now, as I went through the interviews, as I watched more of this video, which I encourage you to go watch, we see that Caleb has always been pretty narcissistic. He's always felt like he was above. His ex-friend talks about how Caleb has always been somewhat inappropriate and always has seemed to have a very big ego about him. Caleb used to be, now, <laughs> we all know Caleb is a fan, they, we say he's a financial expert or whatnot, but he went to school for music. And so when he went to school for music, he was in this group. And being in this group that he was in, he was always inappropriate. He at one point sent a picture or an image of two men being very intimate with each other. He pretty much sent them corn. So it was corn, actually. He sent them corn. And so at the end of the day, what we are learning more and more from this Caleb fellow is that, yes, is he great on YouTube? Yes. But behind the scenes, there's something very disturbing about this man. And I want to say this. When I was watching the interview with Caleb Hammer and Stephen Graham, I was listening to it, learning about him. And there was a very part at the very end when uh, Stephen Graham asked him a question and he says, like, is there anything else you want to say? And Caleb says, uh, F you guys for not hiring me. And I, and I, I listened to that part a few times and I thought to myself, man, that was kind of weird to say. Um, even if they didn't hire you, it is what it is. However, I now think Stefan made the right decision not to hire this man. I'm sure he didn't know about all these allegations because none of us did. Uh, except for the people who were listening to Zeke from the very beginning of this video who has been talking about this for a year. Okay. So that's when I first started thinking Caleb's kind of weird. After I watched that interview with Stefan Graham, I quit watching Caleb because I was like, something's off about this guy. For him to say it the way he said it and the way he talks, it's just like, I just don't feel like he's really that nice of a guy now people say now people who have gone on his show have said he's he's nice he's polite and all these things but here's my problem also with all of this he makes it seem like these people are worse than they are caleb even went as far as when the interview that i was talking about with gia which i still recommend you go watch it was one of the guests on his show there was she told him not to mention certain things. And guess what Caleb decided to do? He mentioned it anyway for clicks and views. Caleb is still a young man, but he is a very disturbing man. He is a man who has got caught up in the height of YouTube. And he is a man who has clearly got some sick things going on in the head behind the scenes. Now, with all this information and allegations, should this man be able to continue to move forward like he um, moved forward like nothing happened? My answer is if, and based off of everything I've seen, and, he, and by the way, Caleb did not deny any of these messages, by the way. So for people saying that it's fake and all this, Caleb himself, go watch the video, said that these are not fake messages. They were just taken out of context. So he never denies that message that he sent to that guy. He doesn't deny any of the messages about the 16 year old. He doesn't deny any of that. So. Should we still support this man? Should we still be okay with this man? My answer personally is no. Don't think this man should be supported. The, the guy who's his ex-friend and the guy who was in the group with him says that Caleb has not changed. Caleb is very much this man today. The Caleb is nothing new. He was doing this in 2023. Those messages are from like 2018, 2019. And they say, his friend said in 2023, he is still inappropriate. and He still talks like this. So I do not believe the thing that happened to Zeke was only a year ago when he touched Zeke inappropriately. So this man should not be supported. I do not care about his channel. I do not care how uh, financially successful he is. This man is disturbing. He'll do anything for clicks and views. He has everybody who comes on his show to lie and to hype themselves up and to hype up the bad things just to get more clicks and views. This is not a sincere man. This is not. This man is very disingenuous. And in my opinion, he is caught up in the YouTube sauce, but 
Even if we take YouTube away from all of this, he's still a very sick individual the way he talked about young teenage boys just because they're 17 and 16. Let me tell you something. Any man who goes that far to say, oh, but he's 16. Oh, but he's 17. We got all over Pearl for saying these exact same things. So if Caleb doesn't get it, then I don't understand what standards we're holding. When a person goes after a teenager in any capacity and says it's okay, it's not okay. His girlfriend should leave him. This man should no longer, no longer be supported. If he wants to be on YouTube and make no money, I'm perfectly fine with that. But if this money is going to something that's not even real, and he's talking about young teenage boys behind the scene like this, I just find him very disturbing. But we'll see what happens. But y'all let me know what y'all think about this. Caleb Hammer no longer has my support. I supported him and I will never talk nicely about him again unless some things happen. He gets some help, gets some therapy and changes his ways. But as of right now, this man is too disturbing to protect. This man is too disturbing to be around children. And this is the man I just don't want to ever be associated with or ever, ever talk about, especially him being from my hometown. So this man disgusts me and that's all I have to say. Let me know what you think. Goodbye.